Well, folks, what I'm doing is I went and looked for some mud crabs, found a couple, and I threw the cast net once, caught a bunch of maharas, so I'm going to throw it again and see if I can't catch any. Can't catch any more. I caught some so I can use for uh, chum when I go to make my chum block. Oops. A small little sheep's head. Another mahara. Be sure to wear gloves when you're looking for mud crabs. <laughs> there should be some in here. I threw on the other side, but there should be some more in here. See if I can't get some. Got a bunch of small ones. Oh no, I got mud minnows. Those are even better. I'm gonna go get my other one. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm getting out the mud minnows, AKA killifish, AKA whatever you wanna call them, mud minnows. And putting them in my aerated bucket in there and just like that folks I've got enough bait that I can fish with and I've got enough bait that I can chum with so now we're gonna go get shrimp from the little manatee bait shop Brittany you got any shrimp for me I sure do Are you ready to shrimp it up today do you have at least three dozen <laughs> I do. Is that small, medium, or large today? Well, that is going to be medium because I think your larges are too large. <laughs> your mediums are too large. If you guys don't know Brittany, this is Brittany, a.k.a. Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> Only From... because you've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I stopped at the first of the year. Hour. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> There's many times I come home and I want some wine. I hear you. But anyway, Brittany owns the Little Ma Little Manatee Bait and Tackle Little, Little, Man Manatee. Little Manatee River Bait and Tackle Shop, and she's been here for how long? Since August of 2020. Oh wow! I didn't realize you were here that long. Yeah. Okay. Well, Brittany has a supply of our jigs which we have another order coming we're working on it now we got a majority of it but we'll have it to you by tomorrow and she's been gracious enough to let us put her stuff our stuff into her shop i'm all over the place this That's morning okay. it's because you're drinking <laughs> no it's because i'm not drinking anymore oh. that's the problem that's the problem, that's the problem. okay so anyway, we get all of our shrimp from Brittany. She supplies us with our shrimp every weekend. Chad comes in here and spends a ton of money. And no, we don't get our shrimp for free or anything else like that, even though she thinks we're famous, but we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. Stand in here for a minute. Yeah. Famous. So anyway, we came here to get uh, three dozen shrimp, and we'll see if we can go out and catch some sheep's head today. Now, I know you're probably going to say, well, he's wearing a different shirt because people are like that. There's a reason. My audio yesterday did not come out very well on my 360 camera, so that's why I'm here today. So I already know what I caught, but you're gonna have to watch the video. So let's go ahead and get the three dozen shrimp. All right, Brittany, so, so tell people exactly where you're at. It's kind of hard to miss you when you're coming to like Cockroach and places like that. We are located at 2103 South U.S. Highway 41, Ruskin, Florida, 33570. We are at the north end of the 41 bridge over the Little Manatee River. Yeah, so if you go past the bridge, you went too far. But you can't miss it. I mean, she's right on the corner. Of 10th Street and 41. There you go. And she's like literally a half a mile from us, maybe. Maybe, maybe a half a mile, maybe. quarter mile, three quarter mile. But anyway, um, she's she's your shrimp lady. I was gonna say something <laughs> bad. <laughs> Our mediums. There you go. All right, folks. So stop by and see her if you're looking for live bait, frozen bait. She's got it all. Everything. Uh, she she has pinfish every once in a while. Uh, she definitely has shrimp, 
So, but one thing that I do recommend is if you are coming and it's gonna be a nice weekend and you're wanting to fish for sheep's head, hogfish, something like that, I would highly recommend putting a call in to reserve your bait because Chad has, he does that every weekend pretty much. So we get like 20 dozen, 30 dozen sometimes, 30. So you might want to reserve your bait beforehand. So I just want to say thanks again, Brittany, for taking care of me. Brittany, AKA Brandy. That's right. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So come and visit us, folks. Let's go out and see if we can't get on some sheep's head. All right, folks, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to actually use a 3 8 ounce huggy in the Crabalicious with a one aught octopus hook. I'm actually going for sheep's head today. So we're gonna see, it's, it's a little bit windy. We're inside the bay. I don't fish for sheep's head very much, but I'm gonna give it a shot and see what we can do. One thing that you have to be is relatively pretty patient when it comes to fishing for sheep's head. <laughs> they have a slight little tap, tap bite, and then if they start taking off with it, that's when you wanna put the hook in them. Well, it's just not a bite that I'm used to. But it's a, it's, a, it's a slow little tap tap. But what I've been told lately though by a lot of my guide buddies is that these fish have been actually running with it like that and taking off with it. And sure enough, there's a sheep's head. Holy moly, I caught a sheep's head, folks. That's a shocker. But primarily what they do is they'll sit there and tap, 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 and then you'll see us, and then you'll get a steady pull that's when you want to put the hook in them. You don't want to do it when they're tapping it. But um, on this one, he took off with it. Not a huge one, but hey, it's a start. First fish in the boat. It's a, it's a confidence thing. And I keep telling people that when we were at the boat show, boat show this last weekend, um, you know, people would come up and ask, well, what color is the best? Well, that just depends on, on you. It depends on uh, what you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable with a certain color or you don't think you're gonna catch fish, then don't use it. Use what you're comfortable with. Use what you have confidence in. Uh, I told many people that I, uh, with a gold spoon, my confidence is zero. I cannot catch a fish on a gold spoon. So I hate using them. Even though I was on a pot of redfish, about 90, we caught 95 redfish out of this pot of redfish problem was is I threw the gold spoon I couldn't even get bit so it's a confidence thing like there's another ooh, there's a better one so you want to have confidence in what you're doing that's a good one boy <laughs> yeah buddy that's what I'm talking about right there folks that is a sheep's head a good one you know what I might put this in the, in the live well just for my buddies, for my buddy Marty, because he loves sheep's head. <laughs> but that Stewie jig's got him right in the corner of the mouth with the octopus hook right there. Crabalicious. And if he doesn't want them, then hey, I can throw them back. But that fish literally didn't even didn't even tap it he was on it so again you want to have confidence in the in what you're using be it a live sh a live shrimp a live white bait a live whatever mahara anything you just want to have confidence in it and actually how i'm hooking that is i'm double hooking it i'm going through the tail and then back through the tail and I'm not gonna profess to be some kind of sheep's head master or anything like that. Um, typically, I do not like fishing for them because it's such a subtle bite and you have to really be on top of it. But if they continue to eat like that, I can't complain at all. I just had to find the right spot. I was setting up on some spots that had some nice, nice ledges and nice rocks and stuff, but I wasn't getting bit. But now, it's like as soon as it gets down there, they're on it, like I've just missed that one. I should have put the hook in them. God bless America. But they're, they're hitting it. I mean, they're not, they're not wasting any time whatsoever. 
Oh, should have put the hook in that one there. Oh, <laughs> bill dance. So basically I'm just um, taking the tail, breaking it off. And I know everybody has their different ways of doing it. Some might even use a smaller piece, but I'll go through the end of the tail and then work it right back through again. And then drop her down. We're sitting in 23 feet of water, sitting right on a major ledge. I'm using a 3 8 ounce uh, Stewie jig with the octopus hook, number one octopus hook. Perfect size hook for these fish. Man, they are on it like immediately. Oh, come on, Todd. That one just took off with it again. Oh, no, that's a little grouper. <laughs> little grouper. Just like that, we got another one. Not a big one, but uh, I'll take them. Well, as you can see, folks, um, I was able to get on this ledge. It's not on the shipping channel. It's off the. It's out away from the shipping channel. But as you can see, I'm kind of right, right in the middle of it. You can see there's a portion of the ledge here and portion of the ledge to the to the left, and you can see that there's fish coming up in the water column. There's fish down in the bottom. So I've definitely caught some some sheep's head here. Uh, caught some small grouper, so now I'm going to go look for another area and see if I can't find something else. All right, folks, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking at this and seeing if there's going to be anything there. I'm not seeing anything in the side imaging so far, but that doesn't mean anything. There's definitely some fish right on the, right on the bottom right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go past it just a little bit since the tide's coming in this way. I'm going to go past it just a little bit, hit the anchor mode, and see what we can do. We should be able to be just off of it, but it's showing some fish down off the ledge. And there was some nice, there was some structure up on top. So we're going to see, never fished here before, there's a mark right there, but that's not mine. That was part of the one that was gifted to me. So we'll see what happens. Let's see if we can catch some fish. There's another one. That would be a keeper. Not a bad sheep's head. Barely got him hooked. You gotta love those teeth though. Look at those teeth right there. Pretty gnarly. Can't really see them. I don't want to put my finger in there. I'll show you on the next one. Oh. <laughs> I may need to get the net on this one. Holy cow. I think that's the biggest sheep's head I've ever caught. Oh. Oh my god. Holy cow. Wow. I've never had a net a sheep's head before. Holy cow. <laughs> I'm actually gonna throw this fish back. This is just a big honking snap or snapper sheep's head. <laughs> 20 and a half inches. What an absolute beast. Wow. <laughs> I think this is my PB. Wow. 
Let him go. There he goes. I'm not a huge fish eater. I've got one in the live well. My buddy Marley, Marty, I'm gonna give it to him. Let him have it. Um, a lot of the time when I go out by myself, I just catch and release because that's just who I am. When I go out with a bunch of other people, we'll keep our limit of fish and, and you know, they that all that fish does not go to waste. Everybody gets, or everybody gives family, friends, some barter for services, they, that fish gets consumed. We get a lot of questions about that. People ask us, well, you know, what about, what about the fish? Or, you know, what are you doing with all this fish? Well, that's exactly what happens. A lot of these people will take it for fish fries. A lot of people will take it for their family. Uh, and then they, they barter it for services. I know Chad does that quite a bit with, with his fish that he keeps. So none of that fish goes wasted. Trust me, I, I, I can tell you right now, when I keep a fish, I typically, we, we will keep, or cook it that night or within a night or two. So just to let you guys know that none of that fish that we keep goes to waste. I wanna get into a little bit more specific of what I'm looking for when I go out looking for sheep's head. It's about the same of what I look for for grouper and snapper. So I, I know that these fish are here year round. The thing is, is we don't typically have the bait to fish for them. So that's why we don't catch them like in the spring, summer and fall, because we're not fishing for shri with shrimp inside the bay. So that's what I wanted to concentrate on today was going out and finding sheep's head. This is actually a brand new spot. It's a heck of a ledge. I've already caught a keeper or a grouper on it, and then that big, big sheep's head. So definitely there's a, a lot. Let me put it like this. If you guys are going to look in areas, I highly recommend looking in the spoil areas of Tampa Bay. They have a lot of rocks because it's when they dredged it and dumped it. So look for the spoil areas, and the spoil areas are from way up north all the way past the skyway so if you're looking for out of the way places definitely look at the spoil areas As you guys saw, uh, I went and caught some bait earlier today and something interesting happened is I caught maharas, I caught uh, uh, killifish or mud minnows, whatever you want to call them, and then I caught some tilapia. And funny enough is the tilapia actually stay alive in salt water. I did not know that. I learned that today is, and I know that they're awesome snook bait. They actually stay alive in the, fr in the salt water. I'm shocked, but hey. If I can go and catch tilapia this side, I, our size, I bet you I can catch some. I bet you I can catch a grouper on that. So I'll have to try it out. Well, folks, that was nice to get out and kind of do some fishing inside the bay again. I know we kind of lost our roots when going offshore a lot, but I, I wanted to get out there. I'm going to start doing this more often. Is getting out the bay and doing some more fishing inside the bay. Um, as you can see, caught a really nice sheep's head. Actually caught my personal best sheep's head that I threw back. Uh, I wanted to bring one back for my buddy Marty who lives in a trailer down by the river. <laughs> Actually, he doesn't live right by the river. He lives close to it. But anyway, I wanted to bring him. He loves sheep's head, so I brought him one. And um, hopefully you guys learned something today about the spoil areas inside Tampa, inside Tampa Bay. Those spoil areas were caused when they dredge the, uh, when they dredge the shipping channel. So those, what happens is it throws rocks and, and all kinds of stuff up into shallower areas. And it, it holds grouper, it holds snapper, it holds sheep's head, it holds all kinds of stuff, Spanish mackerel. So don't overlook those spoil areas because there's a lot of ledges and a lot of rocky area. You just got to pick and choose which ones hold fish and which ones don't because they don't all hold fish. 
So again, I just want to say thank you for watching. Uh, by the way, we have released the Gold Diggers. So if you haven't su subscribed to the website, those people who have subscribed got an email from us on Monday talking about us releasing the, the Gold Digger. So we have released the Gold Digger. You can buy them in the Stewie, Circle and Octopus, three quarter through one and a quarter, and the Huggies, three quarter through one and a quarter, and the Ball Jigs, two through six ounce. So again, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Fish more, catch more, and we'll see you on the flip side.